Welcome back to Auburn Scrub. Today we're going to be going over how to set up a feeding pump. You're going to need some clean gloves, a towel, a Dale adapter or a Lopez valve depending on what your facility has. You're also going to need a feeding pump as well as a feeding bag set up. So this one has two bags. This one it allows you to pour over your formula into one bag and then also your flush into the flush bag. So keep in mind there is one that you directly spike but this one only has the two bags available for us. So this is also I'm using the sterile water. You can use tap water, but depending on how critical your patient is, you might wanna to go to sterile water instead. Now, of course, as with anything, go ahead and perform your hand hygiene. And that was of course fairly fast, but perform hand hygiene, and then you can start setting up. And this is your feeding pump. We've already plugged it in. Depending on the hospital or facility that you work at could be different, but this is essentially how you do it. So go ahead and don your clean gloves. You're going to grab your feeding pump set. This one is a double bag, remember it has a flush bag as well as a formula bag. Remember that there's another one that you can actually spike the formula in, but this one in particular is a double bag. This right here is your tag, so you can name, date, time that you placed it up. Remember it's only good for 24 hours and every 24 hours you're going to switch it out. So as you see here, this is for the water, the blue bag is for the water, and then for the purple one is the formula itself. And so now we start to pour. Right here, I'm just showing you that this portion is capped. You want to keep this capped until you connect it to the patient. Keep it as clean as possible, of course. It isn't sterile. Um, right here, I'm pouring in the solution. Make sure that you shake your formula so that it doesn't get stuck and pour into clumps. That'd be really nasty. So as you see here, I'm holding it with one hand and with the other, I'm going to go ahead and pour my formula into it. Now keep in mind that this portion of the plastic bag can kind of collapse on itself. So you wanna make sure that it's open all the way. I've rushed it sometimes and have accidentally spilled everything all over and trust me, you don't wanna, you really don't wanna to have to clean up formula all over your scrubs and everything else because it's very sticky. Okay, so done with that. And then we're gonna go ahead and cap this. And there's a little notch right here, as you see, clip it into that notch and you're gonna feel like a little clip and you're going to hang this first so that you don't accidentally open this bag and spill it all over the place. And we're gonna do the same thing over here with the blue bag. This blue bag is for your water. It can either be saline water as we're using here in the critical care unit, or we're gonna go ahead and use tap water if it's not available. We try to stay away from using normal saline because of crystallization, and we can go into this in another video, but pretty much we use saline water here in the ICU. And again, if it's not available, you use clean water. Regular tap water is just fine. And as we do this, we don't pour the whole saline uh, water in the bag because we can utilize that for regular flushes for the meds later on. So we're gonna go ahead and clamp this closed like we did with the other bag. We're gonna shift this over so that everything is aligned. You don't want anything tangled because if it's tangled, it's gonna give you an error onto your machine. And of course, clear out your bubbles from the bag and off we go to priming. All right, so here we're gonna go ahead and turn the machine on. Gently press this for a couple of seconds as a power button. You're gonna hear a little beep like that. And this is to clear the settings. And so now everything is zeroed out. Pop this portion open like this. And you're gonna simply see that this area has a notch. You're going to face this notch towards you. And as you can see in the back, there are instructions right there too. So you're going to loop this to the top portion of it and click it. And then you're going to pull the wire taut like that. It's not wire, I guess it's a tubing. Taut through the circle and upwards like this. And you clear everything out of the way and then you're going to go ahead and close it. And that's pretty much it for this setup. Um, you're then going to pop this portion off and you pop this off because when you're priming it everything's going to be pushed out and if you've ever primed with that cap on it's going to shoot back at you it's pretty funny actually if you ever tried to do it but let's not do it right now <laughs> all right so you're going to prime this and you can either auto prime or you can hold to prime flush or you hold to prime the feed we always like to auto prime, especially if it's a, the initial setup, but if you need to prime it for whatever reason, let's say there's gonna be 
air in there or anything, you can prime it by holding that prime feed itself. All right, so now it's priming and as you can hear it, it's gonna take a good couple of minutes for everything to kind of run through the tubing. And as it's making its way down, you'll notice how effectively and efficiently this thing goes all the way through the very tippy top of your tubing. You're gonna to wanna to also have maybe a cup available or close to the sink or over the toilet so that the water and the formula doesn't drip everywhere to the floor. And as you can see here, it's at the very end. We always like to make sure that there's no air at all. So you can hold to prime flush or hold to prime feed here. And in this case, we're gonna hold to prime feed because you wanna feed the patient, right? And that's it. You're gonna press done, click. And now you see here that there's all set up, or well, almost set up. All primed is what I meant to say. So now we're gonna go ahead and check to see the settings. You'll see that the sign says set loaded, but everything else is zeroed out, right? Because we cleared it out in the beginning. You're going to want to go ahead and adjust the feed. There's a feed rate and there's a feed volume to be fed. That's VTBD. And then you're going to go ahead and press the feed rate. And as you see here, there are three arrows. So that's first one is a hundred spots. Second one is the tens and the third one are the ones. And this is mLs per hour and it says 400 max. Now let's say I accidentally placed this to be 150 mLs per hour. For whatever reason, I accidentally did this. Simply correct this by going back to the feed rate, press that button, and then you can clear this by pressing and it resets itself like that. And go back into a 10 spot. We're gonna go ahead and just feed 10 mLs per hour. Press enter. And as you see here, the feed rate is 10 mLs per hour. But now you're gonna to need to press VTBD, which is volume to be delivered, and remember that container has 240 mLs in it. You're going to press enter, and to verify everything once more, press done. That will allow you to see all of these, such as adjust flush, and you can adjust the flush by pressing adjust flush volume like that. And let's do 30 mLs, press enter. And you're going to press your flush interval like this. And we're going to do four hours. And then you press enter again. And you want to press done. And then you hit run when you're ready to go. You'll see the little water drop right there. And that just means that it's running. Now, if you need to hold this, press hold. And now you see everything that you need to adjust. You can you can also place this on hold for about 30 minutes and you'll see this yellow light. You can resume in 30 minutes and you can press that if you'd like. But if not, go ahead and press run. Now there's a history button on there too. You can check to see how much it was delivered. But if you clear it every shift, you don't really need it. Now going on to this portion right here. This is your connector. Now you can either have a Lopez valve or this is called the Dale Ace connector. And I personally like the Dale version much more because it has a different component to it, which allows me to place the syringe directly into the portion. And I'll show you this in quite a sec. So this right here as a drawing states, this is the distal portion, which goes distally to the patient. So let's say that that's the tube, the G tube, right? You're gonna hook that up. It's a little confusing because you're going to put the clear side to the patient and then this white portion right here, white to white, it's easy to remember. You're going to place that white to white and that is the proximal portion right there. That's to your feeding pump um, tubing. Now this is to the G-tube, the clear part. And this right here in the middle, as you see, there's a little membrane right there. And you poke your 60 ml syringe in there. It has to be a large syringe for it to fit in there. And you can either aspirate if you need to, you can flush your line if you'd like. And this right here is also one of those like stopcock almost like things. Um, this just stops the flow. So as you see, there's an arrow that goes up and down. If you place it perpendicular like this, you're gonna go ahead and stop the flow from the feeding pump. And so you can do whatever you like with that little membrane and you can either aspirate, you can flush and so on. And once you're ready to continue the feeding, go ahead and open the valve again, laying it flat. 
and then once you're done changing a patient or holding the feeding for whatever reason, then go ahead and press the run button again. And as always, you're going to want to go ahead and place your tag on there. So we know exactly who this belongs to, just in case they get transported or whatever. We know who this feeding pump belongs to or feeding um, contraption belongs to. So this is John Doe, and as you see the formula right there, Vital 1.0 Cal, and it's hung by orange scrub, today's date, room number, any additives in there, how it's delivered, this is delivered NGT, and let's see, it's going to be given continuously at a rate of 10 ml per hour, a trickle feed, <laughs> And again, who it's hung by, it's orange scrub. Oh, the other one was prepared by, so prepared and hung by orange scrub. The date, the time that it's being hung, and then also the expiration date and time. Now that's important because you wanna throw out any solution, including the flush, 24 hours after it is first hung. It's expired by then. Simply grab the sticker and slap it on either the flush or your feeding bag like this. If you don't have it, don't worry. You can go ahead and just get yourself a permanent marker and just write it on. That's it. This is still placed on hold. We're going to go ahead and mark our stair water that we opened up with the date, the time, and remember this is good for 24 hours as well. Remember to clean up after yourself. Nobody likes a dirty nurse rack. Don't forget to check for placements, residual, and you're good to go. Hook up to a patient, comment, like, subscribe. Bye, guys.